Hey guys, what is up? It is Flexpoint, and this is episode three for my YouTube series. A new YouTube, well, it's not that new, it's been up a while. How to carry your game. Alright, now if you need a refresher or you haven't seen the first two episodes, they are on, the, they are on my YouTube channel. You can check the playlist, Flexpoint's How to Carry the Game, How to Carry Your Team. Uh, episode 1, we're going to go back a little bit. Episode 1 was how to master and make good use of split pushing with your champion. Uh, episode 2 was how to utilize teleport to help you win the win the game, not so much the lane phase. And for episode 3, um, this is the comeback. Now, the comeback is starting off really bad. As I started off really bad, the team started off really bad. And what we were able to do is utilize our individual champion mechanics, join them together, and make a really strong team comp. Now looking at our team, I'm the Kennen. We have Kennen, Rengar, and Yasuo who dive in. Yasuo is very reliant on Blitzcrank here. And it's it's a good comp. It's it's good for team fighting. Their comp, same thing. They have the early game dominance from Lucian Janna in the bot lane. Early gank pressure from Nautilus. And lane bully Vladimir and TF. TF is a force level six. I apologize. And Usually he'll dominate the mid game. Anyways, let's begin. Alright. I will commentate on my lane phase um, in the process here. Uh, what I sh could do is go through every lane and go like that, but I'm going to focus on my individual play here, and I do that for my other guides as well. This video is going to be around you playing poorly early and what you can do to come back and win the game. So, I start off on Kennen with a Doran's Blade and a Pot against Vladimir. Uh, my runes will be in the description. And, uh, fast forward, we're not going to watch the entire game, it'll take too long. Minions have spawned. Vladimir actually does the individual cam. I need to use his pot. So Vladimir's gonna have an advantage into the lane phase, which is definitely why I was like lost really hard. But again, what I'm trying to do is just farm. By this time I noted I figured that they double jungled. And he got level two, but it was too quick. never want to trade with your opponent if he's level um, 2 and you're level 1. It's very unwise. On this cannon build, we're going to max W here. Lower this down for you guys. We're going to max W. I was playing Hearthstone. <laughs> yeah, it was a really good game, so I was like, okay, I'm gonna take a break and play this really quickly. It's funny because like my buddy was like in his Diamond 5 D-Motion series, so... Alright, so there's the first blood from Lucian, four minutes into the game. I'm getting smashed. It's really bad for me. Um, I figured that was a good trade there, but he's about to be level 5. So, and he's gonna sustain through, which is really bad. Pretty much the reason why I lost this, I stayed here too. Like I should have, I should have left, but I stayed. He got the flash QE into the pool. Yeah, he got the Q and then the E hit me from the back. I got really greedy there. I wanted to try and see if I can bait him, which is unwise. All right, so we're down 2-0. We're down 1K gold. It's pretty bad because Yasuo is about to die. There goes Yasuo. This is an early game Nautilus pressure. So we're down 3-0 now. It doesn't look good. TP here because I really needed to um, get all the creeps. Came, I come back with a no mantle. Not much pressure in the lane phase. 
Um, Vladimir comes back with a Hex Shrinker, or not a Hex Shrinker, um, Hex Tech. So I'm in trouble. Really bad for me. He's level 6, I'm level 5. So I pretty much just have to play safe. Now, right here, we're gonna take, we're gonna take, we're gonna stop here and we're gonna utilize the situation here. We have Kennen, who, me, who's 0 and 1 with 26 farm, level 5. Vladimir is 34 farm, Hextech, and a kill. He's level 6. Your main goal here is to not die. That's it. Don't die. You know, you're gonna tell me, dude, you're only 0 and 1. I mean, that's not that bad. It is bad. Okay, we're down 0 3. This is where, where people tend to make a mistake. I'm only 0 and 1. I can afford to, you know, try and make a play to come back. No, you need to look at the team score first. And then you look at your score. If you're 1 and 1, you should, and you'd be like, man, I can kill my opponent, maybe. Don't do it. Okay? Team is down 0 and 3. We're down 1k gold. Don't die. You're gonna have to, I'm going to have to miss farm, and that's fine. I just cannot die here. And he's going to zone me out. I'm going to run back. I'll let him zone me out. I will not miss the cannon because I'm going to need that. I did some harass. You gotta, this dude has no MR. So my harass is definitely going to stick. But he has the hex deck. I mean, yeah. So it's not. Again, he's going to zone me and that's fine. Because I really need to get level 6. And even at level 6, he's going to beat me because he outsustains me. Get shoved into the lane. Right into the tower. But again, I can't let him harass me down. Because if he harasses me down, he's just going to die me under tower and kill me. Which is why I'm trying my absolute best to avoid harass. Pretty easy to farm under towers, Kennen. Alright, we get a kill on the bot lane. Which is fine. So it's 1 to 3. Miss that cannon. Let's actually put the cannon in the cannon cam. TF ultied, or TF got to kill mid lane, so we're down 1 4. And again, here I'm just trying not to die. I got chunked down pretty bad there, so I said, you know what? I'm going to ping for help. Now, pinging for help is in itself. A message that you send to the team. I mean, obviously, it's, you're saying you need help, but you have to keep remember when you top lane, you need to top lane with the mentality that you do not get ganks. Okay. You shouldn't be asking for ganks. I don't even remember the last time I pinged for help, but I did this game because it's, it's one to four. I'm getting shoved in really hard and I'm getting down in CS. And we need a kill. Okay, you know, even if we die, we just need a kill. We need something to get some momentum going. So I ping for help. And for those of you that have watched me and you watch me stream, you'll notice that I never, ever ping for help. And you shouldn't either. Pinging for help is something that should be more respected for top laners. Because with top laners, it's like an un... It's like an unwritten rule that you don't ask for ganks. Let the jungler worry about the bot lane and the mid lane. You do you. Okay. It's like a heightened state of mind when you top lane. Now that sounds really like boastful, like oh top laners are superior to everyone else. Oh yeah, we're the best. But think about champions that have like impact in team fights, normally it's top laners. So yeah. You should be able to do that on your own. It gets stunned there to harass him down. I get creep blocked and took a Q. And notice, I only pinged help once. That's it. That's all you gotta do. Don't spam it, don't do anything. When you spam help to your teammates, it shows that you are weak. It shows that you need to be babied in the lane phase, which is like sends the bad message to your team, which will hurt the overall morale. Okay. See Rancor coming, I'm cool. It's obviously not warded because he came back. He hit the Q. You get the stun. Right here, mistake. Right there, on top of him. That's where I goofed up. Okay. 
I knew I was dead by that time, so I was like, I'm just gonna stay here. I'm gonna watch that again. And I hope that you all learn from this mistake. Right here. You see this big old circle? But Vlad can be on the edge, and he'll still take damage. Okay, there's no reason to walk up. I walked up because I wanted to hit him with my E, so we can proc the stun. But, like, after I hit him with the E, I should have immediately ran away. And I didn't. If I would have at least ran back, maybe I could have avoided Rengar getting hit by the ulti. And then I died. By that time, I was like, I'm dead anyway, so... Whatever. But yeah. Meanwhile, on the bot lane, Ezreal died again. And I'm not sure, but I think Blitz makes it out, yeah. But again, we're down 3-6. We went from being down 1k gold to 1.7k gold. I'm surprised they didn't dive him. Oh, he's level 6, that's why. Come back to the top lane. Ringer almost died to the to the buffs. Okay. So, at this point, I'm 0-2. And, and this is a ranked game, by the way. Um, Mil is my is Diamond 5 ranked. I haven't played Kennen in weeks. Like, I had no idea why I picked Kennen top. It's, I, actually, I do know. I didn't want to first pick my top laner that I would usually run Aurelia or Fizz or something. Fizz would have been okay because Fizz is like a flex pick, but I don't want to lock in Aurelia or Olaf and then get like hard countered or like they if you pick someone if you pick a champion, smart people will know, okay, well th that champion's weak against this, weak against that. So my goal here is to finish Abyssal as soon as possible, so I tried to shove the wave in. I make a mistake here, and this is where I go. Oh, and three. I was looking for a teleport there, by the way. That's called poor map awareness. We're gonna rewatch that. As soon as I saw, I was looking bot lane there. I was looking mid lane. Sorry. Right here. I didn't know where TF was, so as soon as I saw the TF ulti, I just threw my ulti out in case I get dove. No map awareness. Okay. It kept Vladimir from diving me, but still, that was TF was mid lane. Like there was nothing to it. Okay, Yasuo gets to kill mid because Blitzcrank had a really good roam, and here is my mistake. He's level nine and has ultimate and seventy percent health. I don't have ultimate and I'm at fifty percent health and a lower level, which is very bad. And the wave is shoving. I had summoners, but I knew he did also. Let's kind of comes in for the roam, which is good, but I'm pretty weak. I don't want to risk anything. Lucian, on the other hand, just got a double kill on the bot lane, by the way. So we're down five to eight. Made a mistake here. I underestimated him. I didn't underestimate him. I overestimated myself, actually. I figured, you know, this dude's at 30, 40% health. I think I can kill him. And I tried to zone him, and I did, but... Once his wave came, it was pretty simple to find him. And then I could, that was like really bad. I was on some pretty bad tilt in the early game. Because like, I know, if you walk into lane, and you're level 2 and your opponent's level 1, like, that's, that's pretty much the lane phase right there. What does that mean? That means you're gonna hit level 6 first, and you can probably kill them. So... I am full tilt here. I'm 0 3. 68 farm. Vladimir's 3 and 1 with 101 farm. And he's starting to build MR, which is really bad for me. And he takes my tower. So we are down almost 4k gold 13 minutes into the game. Let's look side by side stats here 0 3 to 3 and 1. 1 and 3 to 2 and 2. 2 and 1 to 1 and 1. 1 and 0 to 0 and 1, 1 and 3 to 4 and 0. So this Lucian was a monster. Now, part of coming back is knowing how to build to come back. There are like two different builds, there are three different build paths. Uh, we'll go with two to make it easier. There's a build while you're ahead and a build while you're behind. Okay. Build while you're behind, especially on someone like Kennen, is. Alright, if I rush Zhonya's here, I'm not going to be dealing that much damage. 
All I'm gonna have is my ultimate, which whatever. I mean, it's nice. And I'll survive a little more in team fights. I wanted to bring forth a little more utility, so for my second item, I just told myself I'm gonna go Rylai's. Why'd you go Rylai's flex? Why not Zhonya's? Well, Rylai's one makes you tankier. Two offers permaslow. Permaslow against their comp is really, really like good for us. Alright, got a kill there. I'm gonna go rewind. So Vladimir is three and one hundred fifteen. I am zero and three with seventy nine, which means I can't lane against him. I'm gonna lose. He's level eleven. I'm level nine. As Kennen and anyone else with a old CC ultimate or someone with a team fight oriented ultimate malfight Kennen gangplank. If you can't lane your opponent, roam. Okay, this Vladimir is getting free farm. But you have to you have to affect other lanes, even if you're behind. So that's exactly what I do here. I go mid lane, I see Asus getting bullied, flash in, pop my ultimate. He gets a good ult, he gets a good flash on, but it doesn't matter because we get the kill onto um Nautilus. Which is okay. It's better than not getting a kill. Sure we used a lot, but it's we got a kill, we see Vlad coming, we pinged it out, and we're okay. Traded one for zero. One for zero trades are the benchmark for coming for comebacks. Okay, you can't just be down and expect to win a giant team fight. We're down five k gold and a dragon and two towers. Okay, baby steps. Get a one for zero trade. Get a couple of those. You're only down two k gold now. Okay, we're gonna trade two for one now. That's that's fine. You know what I mean? But when you make neutral trades, like one for one, two for two, and the, the team that's ahead is obviously going to benefit more. Here, we lose it. We lose 0 and 2 trade in the mid lane. And we are down 6 to 12. 5.4k gold. And we lose a turret. So now we're down 6.2k gold. We're down by a lot. But again, I needed to farm because I really needed to get Rallies. Allies was really important. And again, people are going to disagree with my build path. They're going to say you should have went Zanias, you should have went Zanias, but I just think Rallies is so much more useful where I am right now in this ELO against that team, with our team, like with our um, our players or our champions. Took the Nautilus Flash. It's fine. He got the blue buff, so they won that one, but he got Nautilus Flash. I'll win. Double jungling, perfectly fine if you're behind, share the experience. And what we're looking for here, I look at bot lane. Again, I'm roaming. Vladimir's top lane farming. I'm already in the bot lane at the dragon pit. We get a nice good we get a nice pick on Delucian. And they're gonna face check the dragon pit right here. Allows me to get a good ultimate on to both of them, because he walked in. Traded 3 for 0. Really, really good for us. Down 7k gold, now we're only down 4.7. Okay. Small wins first. Again, if you use someone like Cannon and Malphite, you bring so much to a team fight, like it's not even funny. Okay. You're extremely strong. That's why Malphite, Wukong, Kennen. Well, I know Wukong is like god tier top laner, even though nobody plays him. It's because of the utility his ultimate brings. It's incredibly strong. Kennen for a while was god tier top laner. And I firmly believe that no matter what elo you are, if you pick Malphite, you're going to automatically be more useful than your opponent. Like, all you need to do is press R and become really tanky. But. We'll go into that later. Again, I'm farming here. Dragon is pinged out. Because it's about to spawn. So what do I do? I hard shove because I have teleport and Vladimir doesn't. You have to keep these things in mind. Okay. So what I do? I start roaming bot lane. I, I don't even use my teleport. I just start roaming bot. There's the teleport. Inside the dragon pit. Because they know it's me. And they back off because they're all my cannons in the dragon. Player. I'm gonna be careful. Notice, 
I have my passive up for my auto attack, Mark of the Storm. And I'm not auto attacking the dragon because I don't want to lose it. I'm just walking around, I'm harassing with Q. TF is up here, and Rengar is getting his ultimate off, which means TF is about to get jumped. This is the strike. But again, I'm focused on this TF. Alright, there you go, we get the kill. Now we're gonna freeze here. Why did I go for TF and not help the team? One, because we have Rengar. And Rengar post ultimate gets a movement speed buff, which means his TF was dead. Now we're gonna shift it over to the team fight. It's happening right now. Yasuo is out of the game. Ezreal's not even there. He's not even grouped, he's on the opposite side. Blitzcrank is um, in a tight spot. It's a nice three man silence here. And my Maelstrom is still down. Like, my ultimate's not up yet. This is a pretty crazy dragon fight. It lasted a good while. He misses the ultimate on Ringer, which is important. He flashed it, which is I could have gone right back in there, but I decided to back off. Okay, Rengar's in the bush. It's unwarded. They're on Dragon. This was important, landing the harass. Got the Q onto him. And my, what do you call it? Vladimir just goes way too deep there. And I kill him with my, with my uh, E. Again, vision control. Ward in this bush, ward in this bush. And I think we have wards in the pit. Yeah, we have one ward in the pit. If this bush wasn't warded, Rengar dies. And we wouldn't have been able to kill Vlad. Okay. Landing harass, also important. I think we stop it here, yeah. Sometimes it's best to get the sure kills when you're really far behind, then risk it like a full-blown team fight. Get caught out here. But this is really funny to watch. <laughs> Jenna ulti saved the Blitzcrank. I'm gonna watch that again. I get a really nice Q off on TF here. And Rengar was able to burst him, help me burst him down. And then Jenna ultis to save the Blitzcrank. <laughs> Let's go back. The slow leads, though. I mean, slow slow win. I mean, um, slowly winning back. All right. Down 5k gold, roughly. Down three kills and three turrets. The turrets will come and go, though. Okay. The turrets won't stay up forever. Okay, so I have flash and I have my ultimate. This is like the cannon dream. Like this is what I want to do. This is where I want to be. I want to fight in the jungle in the dragon pit area. This is where me and Rengar dominate. I ping him back because that's where fault lane. Notice just one ping. I don't need a lot of them. He gets a nice grab here. We force him to use his pull, which is a 21 second cooldown. Right here I was looking for a flash ultimate, but we didn't have a ward. So. Remember, I flash ulti, I'm ready to use it. We get into position. I get locked up. Immediately pop my ultimate. Killing the front line. Okay. Sure, my ultimate only hit Nautilus, but now they have no tank. Okay. So why, like, let's slow it down. We're gonna, re we're gonna rewind it, and we're gonna look at exactly what their team did to react to my ultimate. Right here. Adamir runs back and four people in the pit. One person caught out. Right, this is a catch. He's caught out. Okay. Rangar's there full health. Everyone's full health except me. This dude is way too deep. He gets wrecked. Vladimir gets a one man ultimate. So it gets a good ultimate on Lucian. Really, really well played. He goes back to up with the Vladimir. And we trade two for two, I believe. And they got the dragon. Again, not the worst thing, but 
I mean, traded two for two, which is good for being like that far behind, you know. Ezreal messes up here, by the way. I don't know what the dude was thinking. He eat in and right from there, that was a mistake. Not sure what he was thinking. It's pretty dumb. Anyways, again, going for the red eyes. Like we know, when you get to when you get to high gold, plat, diamond, like people generally have a good knowledge of the game. They know that our team cop is really good in team fights. All we need to do is arm up, get our items, and we'll be good. My ultimate's down, so I tell the chat. I chatted in, ulti's down, it would be best if we waited for it. Really good wind wall there. But again, things like that. If you're using someone like Karthus, Malphi, anybody with a really like strong ultimate, you need to tell them when it's down. And I told my team it's down. Ezra was getting pinged out by both teams because he's alone. So they're going to siege this. There's nothing we can do to stop him. I get a flash ulti in. I get knocked back by Janna. He got locked down Nautilus and Vlad. But that was more... It was offensive at first, but then I realized we're gonna we're in trouble. We needed to like do it defensively. All right, traded one one tower for one tower. That was it. Everyone lived. Nobody died. I mean, a lot of people were close to death, but nobody died. Disengage. We disengaged properly. All right. So here, I think I finished my. Yeah, I finished it. There it is. So now I'm ready to fight a lot. Like I'm more confident fighting. Uh, Lucian just died. Just killed Yasuo. Um, Yasuo got caught out. We're down almost 7k gold. But now I'm ready to fight. Okay, I got Permis slow. I'm gonna make a better, a stronger impact in the team fights. My AP is not that high. I'm only 226 minutes into the game, but I bring utility with Permis slow. So. Yeah, Volti goes out. Just my Q, so I just pop my ultimate there. Just to make sure he doesn't get out. Because right now, we just need kills. Free kills. And that was a free kill. I mean, they got kills before, but that was a free kill. And here comes the re-engage. And this is what I mean about the perma slow. I land the Q. Nautilus gets slowed. Activate the W, he gets slowed again. Rock my passive, slowed again. And then Yasuo is just going to clean up here. Good cleanup, get a free dragon. So basically right now, winning team fights, and there's, there's something that y'all aren't seeing. It's the positive reinforcement, okay? In the beginning of the game, we were all shit-talking to each other. That was such a bad play. Top is getting screwed. Mid, mid lane's getting mid, mid lane's feeding. It was kind of bad, but we realized, you know what, we're better at team fighting than they are. So we cut the shit talk and we started actually um, like encouraging people, encouraging each other, which is a big difference. I can't have my TB there just to scare them off, really. Um, they were, Ezreal's really low, Blitz is really low, or not really low, but they're low. So I just type TB to try and scare him off. I have Flash, and I have my ultimate, so that's exactly what I do here. Get two Flashes out of it, I accept, and this is a dead Vladimir. I'm just like, the best. They're looking to re-engage here, so I'm cool with that. Let's try and get a good hook. Don't really want to dive in with the Rengar there. Prime is slow. Easy kill. I mean, there you go. If I had Zonyas, I wouldn't have gotten that kill. Maximize the utility if you know you're not going to be strong enough to make a harder impact. Now I'm going for Zonyas. And now we're only down one kill. And 2k gold. So down two towers, but still, it's perfectly fine. Nautilus shows bot. 
and we immediately start pinging Dragon. I mean Baron. We started, but again, this is this is just a bait. Okay, like we said, everyone was chatting the same thing: bait, bait, bait. Now, baiting Baron doesn't mean just stay in the pit and not hit the Baron. You have to hit the Baron and sell it because if you can take the Baron, you're gonna take it. So Nautilus just recalled. And I see the Vlad because the minions are following, so I throw my Q out, hit him with it, so he slowed. Dodges that, which is a mistake, because now I'm gonna hit it, we're all just gonna hit him with everything. And like right there he's dead. One for zero trade. Or one for one, because Rengar tried to assassinate somebody. Let's crank lands the hook. She's not going anywhere because she's perma slowed. Rip. One for zero. Out of mouth. Again, the Baron pings are, are getting pinged out. We need to team fight. That's our comp. Okay, when you like, even if you don't think you're a team comp, like, even if you don't think, like, oh my my team is not a team fight oriented. If you have one person, like Malfi Cannon, anyone, any one person that can affect more than one per, like more than three people with their ultimate, that's like really strong in team fights. Okay. Yasuo gets caught out here. Ezreal does, actually. Yasuo does really good on baiting. He one man ultis Nautilus, which is a mistake. Or it's not a mistake, but it's like bad. In comes the cannon. Three man stun. All about team fighting. And now we pause. Last time we checked, I was 0-3. And Vlad was 3-1. We look now, I'm 7-3-11. Vladimir's 7-8-3. And he is out farming me like crazy, of course. Yasuo is 6-8, TF is 5-5. Rengar is 8-4, Nautilus is 2-5. Blitz is 2-2-18. Two, two Janna is 1-6-14. Ezreal's four and seven, Lucian's nine and three. Progress. We're actually up in kills now. And we're only down by four hundred gold. But you have to notice in this video, and you can go back and forth, because I'm not gonna rewind it, it's gonna take too long. But there were fights where we traded one for zero, two for zero, even three for zero. Okay. And if we team fought, at the very at the very worst we would trade one for one or two for two or maybe one for one in a tower okay it's all about minimizing bad trades and deaths and here we ping out the baron because nautilus is dead or four of them are dead which is an easy baron and that completes the throw now we're back up in gold the first time in a very long time like 30 minutes i tp so we can lock down dragon We get a really nice pick on here on on um, Lucian. I land my empowered auto attack, so immediately I just flash in. He's the carry. He's the most fed one on their team. Janna was peeling me off because she thought I had ultimate. I didn't. They got like screwed so hard. Yeah, the, by, by now we were already like, these guys are done, they lost. I, I was thinking that. We weren't chatting that, because we don't want to like, get that wrong mentality. But like, they completed the throw. We were telling each other these guys are throwing, like we need to take advantage, step up and win the game. Alright, so we've officially came back. I mean, I'm just going to speed this game through. Um, pretty much just ulting this cannon, making sure you have more than one person.
like I said, we're a team. We're a team. We're a team fighting dog. I'm not gonna talk too much about this. We've already came back, and now we're just extending our lead. Rengar got caught top lane, but we traded one for one. Man, if my ultimate was up here, that'd be amazing. We got a little careless here, but I mean, at this time we're up like 10 kills. So. Now we're, we're the ones up 5k gold. You know what I mean? All good. Lad's farm ain't good either. <coughs> Next thing I'm going for is the gunblade. Just so I can have a little bit of sustain and deal more damage with my autos. And have the slow, mostly. But again, what do we do with our lead? We go top lane. We took inhib, we're going top lane. Top or bot, we have to pick one, and we picked top lane, so we all went top lane. Blitzcrank got the wards out, and we're, we're, we're good. <laughs> Blitzcrank gets a grab. I get the ultimate. Two for zero. And y'all are probably wondering, why did why did Yasuo use, why did y'all use everything on Janna? Well, because... We want to keep our lead. They were bot lane and mid lane. There was only two people there. We just want to kill people right now. We want to shove it in. But again, things to remember when you want to come back and when you're trying to come back is no bad trades. Minimize the, minimize the deaths, minimize the poor trades. Okay. If there's an opportunity where you can get one for zero, take it every time. No matter how many ultimates you need to burn, it doesn't matter. As long as you get that one kill, okay? And disengage, okay? Because you've just used all your ultimates. So, overview of the video. One, even if you do really poorly and even if you're losing early really hard, you can still come back and win. Okay, still point one. Okay, you can come back. It's very possible. All right. Uh, point number two. Don't tunnel too much on trying to farm your way back. Okay, like some people, and I'm guilty of this, especially if I use someone like Jax or Aurelia. I'm just like, or even Vladimir. Like, okay, I'm really weak, I need to split push all game and get my farm up to 250 and then I'll be strong. Okay, I, I've, I've had that mentality. I'll still have it sometimes. But if you can affect more than two, three people with your ultimate, you have to, have to, have to, have to group. That's the best way to come back, by helping the team rather than just yourself. Okay. Really important to do. Uh, point number three maximize your utility okay if you can't if you have if you have um if your kid allows you to be a little on the utility side in my case it's perma slow um someone will like wukong maybe it's a frozen mallet or randuins malphite it would be randuins and frozen heart um do it okay anything to affect the team fight and tilt it in your favor that's what you need, okay? Like I said, in my case, permaslow. Do I think it was what made us win the game? No, but it helped. And that's all you need to do. You need to go from, like, if a selfish person would, a selfish person, a selfish person would have said, I'm gonna go death cap. I'm gonna go void staff. And I'm just gonna build a, I'm gonna build damage. Like, it's, that's not, the most proficient way to help your team win. Okay. Um, point number five, and probably the most important one, do not talk down to your teammates. And we did to each other. I call this Rengar useless, because he didn't do anything in the early game, which of course he couldn't, but... Um, people were calling everyone bad, you suck, you're the reason we're losing. 
But again, once we realized, you know what, we can actually win this game, we stopped. And it was all positive. Positive reinforcement. Which sounds cheesy, but that's that's what it was. Okay. And it sounds cheesy again, step six, but ward. Warding's pretty important. Especially if you're fighting in the jungle, which is what we did, and which is why we had the advantage. I was duo with the Blitzcrank, and okay, one, he upgraded his Sightstone. <laughs> Janet didn't. That's like that's how you know if someone's gonna ward and take it serious, All right? And we had vision. Look at this. Look at this. We're at the Nexus. We have a ward here, here, two here. Um, I have pink ward down here. Like we have vision, okay. Also important. I just, I really hope. Again, these videos are. <clears throat> I'm not gonna. They're really amateur, okay. I'm not a professional YouTuber or anything like that. I'm just making this video to try and help people learn that you can definitely come back. And I'm trying to teach you exactly how you can do that. In this video, it's when I use someone with a very team-oriented ultimate, team-fight oriented ultimate. Okay. I hope this video helped you. The runes and masteries are going to be in the description. This I didn't really mean for this to be like a canon commentary. This is for anybody that has a strong ultimate. Okay. Farm when you need to finish an item. Um, when you finish an item, an item immediately start team fighting or forcing team fights or picks. Be quick on your teleports. Call out if you have teleport. Call out if you have your ultimate. Okay. Uh, there's a question in the chat. What's the reason you picked Ken in this game? I picked Ken in, and I said this earlier, uh, because I didn't want to first pick. Um, I didn't want to first pick someone like Aurelia, Jax, Renekton, Nar, um, because I would have been able to get countered. And I did get countered as Kenan. So how'd you get counter to Janna? Janna ultimate is a huge counter to Kennen. Lee Sin ultimate, big counter to Kennen. Um, so yeah. It's just with Kennen, there's... It's really... Um, it's really easy for Janna to knock him out. Just press R. You know. If I had to pick someone that dives in, I mean, she would have probably picked Janna again, but you never know if he would have picked a different top laner. But again, the Vladimir did perfectly fine. He beat me in lane, you know. I couldn't lane against him. I had to do. T I had to team fight. You hear that he recognized my skill. I wish I would have heard the entire thing. Nah, dude, it's boring. <laughs> you don't want to hear the whole thing. But yeah, I mean, the I told I was saying it earlier that one of the main reasons we won all these team fights were because we had vision. But again, this was my video. Um, carrying your team, episode three, the comeback. Uh, don't forget to watch the first two, and there will be def there will definitely be more to follow. My internet is back to its full power, so that's really good. Don't forget, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. If you really like the video, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel, which would be great. And again, if you don't feel comfortable leaving comments or questions, you can go ahead and go to my Twitch and ask me there, twitch.tv forward slash... Flex point lol. <clears throat> Made it wet. Flex point. Hey, I've been a long time viewer. And I just wanted to say thanks for your help. Your teachings allowed me to climb to plat 4 this season. And I appreciate all the commentaries you do give during streams. You're welcome, man. Glad I was able to help. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching. And I will see you guys later.